In this Star Wars Outlaws news update video, I will be sharing with you a couple of bits of news that has just come out today. Before we do get into today's news though, make sure you do subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any future news updates on the game. Hot off the heels of my previous video, the game has received its second age rating, pointing towards potentially a release closer than we may have thought. If you did miss my previous Outlaws video, basically South Korea age rated the game and confirmed it would feature a mini game with in-game betting, so something along the lines of Sabak. Then it has been discovered that Australia's age rating board has also rated the game. It's given it the M rating, so mature rating, but in the US and Europe, this is your traditional teen rating. Australia tends to be higher, much like South Korea, compared to other countries in the world. Jedi Survivor, for example, was a teen rating in the US, but had the M rating in Australia. The reasons given behind this rating is online interactivity and science fiction violence. So, science fiction violence is typically considered less graphic than standard violence. It's not as realistic because you're not shooting bullets per se, you're shooting blaster rifles and there isn't much blood typically in games like this. In terms of online interactivity though, this is going to probably get blown out of proportion. People will say there's a multiplayer mode or this confirms there's pay to win microtransactions, something along those lines. If we take a look at other Ubisoft games that don't have a multiplayer mode, they also include the online interactivity section. For example, Assassin's Creed Mirage has online interactivity, so does Assassin's Creed Valhalla. The developers have already confirmed this game does not feature any sort of co-op or multiplayer mode. This is just simple technicality. As for how long it has taken previous games to go from being rated by the Australian's rating board to being released, a Star Wars example, the most recent one, is Star Wars Jedi Survivor. It was rated on the 16th of December by the Australian Classifications Board and then was due to release three months later. It did suffer a six week delay, but still it was originally a three month gap. Massive's previous game, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, was rated on the 29th of September and it was released early December. So it had just over two months worth of time between being rated and released. The timing for both the South Korean and Australian ratings board are pretty close. So it is a possible indicator that this game might end up launching in around June. Many fans are eager to learn more about this game, but they have been so quiet. I do wonder, and there is a feeling within the community, that something is going to happen really soon with this game. Next up, we have confirmation of a technical feature part of the game to increase immersion. This is actually coming from the composer of Star Wars Outlaws himself, William Rogert. You have probably heard William's work before. He is actually having a bit of a moment right now. He is the composer of Hell Divers 2, so if you play that game, all of that music has been composed by William. He's also done the recent Mortal Kombat games, and in terms of Star Wars, he started all the way back at LucasArts on The Force Unleashed. He did some stuff in the audio department there. Then he did some tracks on Star Wars The Old Republic, and then fully composed the cancelled Star Wars First Assault game, along with Vader Immortal, which was awesome. So in an interview that I thought I actually posted on this channel, William talks about how he made the soundtrack for Star Wars Outlaws and some new technology. In Vader Immortal, he used a very strictly traditional John Williams style score, but then he decided to focus on new and original sounds rather than model compositions for Star Wars Outlaws. He tried to imagine how he might approach this new setting in Outlaws and augmented that with his own modern take on stealth heists and scoundrel characters. The score has a continuum of produced events such as analog synths, found sounds such as coins and scrap metal and bottles, along with world instruments, and there is also obviously traditional orchestration mostly taken from the classic score of A New Hope. He also goes on to say that Star Wars Outlaws' score has more fully developed character and faction themes, so you can imagine all of the crime syndicates we are going to be coming up against have their own piece of music. He also confirmed that Star Wars Outlaws will use a complex systemic music system, which he believed to be a first for a Star Wars game. 
I do believe this is not a first, so he's incorrect in that part. Jedi Survivor uses a systemic music system, but in regards to how complex it is, maybe Outlaws does go a step further. He did say that he is also very excited to share more in the coming months. I would love to hear your thoughts on anything I've talked about in this video, so please do let me know down in the comment section below, and remember to subscribe so you don't miss any future Star Wars Outlaws videos. If you missed any of my previous videos, click on the playlist on the screen right now, drop a like to help support the channel, and I shall see you in my next video. Goodbye.